In this video, we are going to do the yellow piece or what is correctly called the anchor. You'll notice that this draft has one thing that's um, a little extra on it. And that's because the way that this circle is on this piece, right? It's on a sloping angle. So it wouldn't be super clear if we dimensioned where that circle is on this face on this part of the drawing or this one, or we could maybe get away with it a little on that one. Um, but the best way to do it is to show a whole nother side of this piece, which isn't the front or the top or the right side, but a unique, a unique side, right? And that would be this angled face if we were looking at it straight on. So notice how the circle in these other views are, are angled, right? With the hidden line of, of that hole going down into it. But notice that this one, you don't see those hidden lines at all because we're looking straight down that hole. And that's a better place. That's a better way of showing where that hole exists on the face of this, on the face of this object. Um, all right, but just like before, we're going to use the front view of this though. So I'm going to get started as I usually do. I'm going to snap that to the right, snap fusion to the left, change my document settings from millimeters to inches. All right. This is going to be the last drawing that we, that we switch to inches. All the rest of our drawings from this point forward are going to be using millimeters. All right. Just as before creating a sketch on the front view and click on the front plane or what's the, the ZX plane. I guess we, we should call that. I'm going to start a line and I'm going to build, I'm going to draw out, sketch out this basic front view right here, just like this. So I'm going to start on the origin, pull to the right, go up, pull to the left, but at an angle, go straight down. Notice I'm skipping this curve. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the fillet tool now to set that curve in there. Click and press enter. Notice I'm not given a radius for this one. The radius was not mentioned on the, the piece for this, because as long as we can assume that these curves are tangent and just an FYI, we assume all curves are tangent, uh, unless, unless other, it's otherwise stated. Um, so since we can assume that this is tangent, the draft doesn't need a radius for that arc because this will be constrained as soon as we get the other dimensions in there. That does mean that after I press enter on this radius, I have to go and delete it. So I'm now going to click on that and click the delete key on my keyboard. Do, go ahead and delete that dimension. So I can go ahead now and do all the other ones. So I'm going to dimension this line to be two and a quarter. I'm going to dimension the bottom line to be five and a half. I'm going to dimension the very end on the right here to be one. This line to be four and a half. And I should have my red padlock. I'm not going to worry about any of the other lines here because they don't exist on this side. On, uh, I don't know if you can, you can't really tell, <laughs> but on the other side it's just flat. And this side has the, the, um, the shelf there. All right. So with that finished, I'm going to go ahead, finish sketch there. And now I'm going to do the inside of this piece. Cause the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the piece come out that way, build out that way, and I'm going to build it almost in layers. So we're going to take care of the red layer first, right? Then we're going to do this blue, what blue layer from here to here. And then um, I guess I'll switch to green, 
to this layer from there to that edge there. And then the shelf, we'll call that the pink layer. And then we'll do the hole and all the rest. All right. So since I'm doing that inside sort of slot, I have to figure out some stuff with this slot. Oh, well, first I have to extrude this. So maybe I should do that. Looks like each of these is one, one half. So I can go ahead and make that happen now. Extrude. But uh, since I want this piece to come towards me, it has to be negative. It's going to be negative 1 over 2. And sketch on the front again. And now what I'm going to do is this sort of angled piece here. So it's going to be just two lines right in the middle. Angle those up. This line. One and one over eight. And this line is two and a one fourth. And they're coincident with the edges. So coincident point to line, point to line. All right. Now this isn't fully constrained yet. And the reason why is because it doesn't know what this, what angle to make this. And this really should say this on the draft. I mean, I'll have to find a way to fix this, but I don't know if you can tell, but the line that's here, this comes in at a 90 degree angle. They are perfectly uh, perpendicular. Notice, I guess you can kind of tell that because this line and this line are perfectly horizontal um, or not horizontal, perpendicular. <laughs> so we can set this to be perpendicular Oh goodness, those were parallel lines, by the way. I record these after school, so I'm a little scatterbrained on this video. In the video I recorded before this. <laughs> but anyway, we're there. We got our line fully, we got our thing fully constrained because we added the perpendicular line uh, constraint to those two lines there. I'm gonna click Finish Sketch. And now I'm gonna pull this away and extrude that. Another. Well, this one is three over four. So it's going to be three over four. Enter. All right. Now I want this to be over here. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a sketch on this face right here. And I'm going to project this geometry using the project tool. So I'm going to go in the create tab here and find project slash include and find the project tool right here. With the project tool, I'm just going to select this and notice that uh, um, let me, let me deselect that for a quick second. Notice how, when I hover my mouse over it, I get a, this little red line to show as a preview of what I'm carrying over. Cause I want this as a part of the sketch of my first one. So if I click that and click okay. Now it's been projected and that's it. <laughs> There's nothing else on this side. So I don't, I don't even really have to draw anything. All I did was create a projection. So I'm going to click finish sketch on that. And now I'm going to extrude both this and this by another one half, one over two. And there we go. Now on here, I'm going to need the lines that make up this little shelf that I haven't done yet. So I'm going to create a sketch here. Um, where is it? Here we go. The top of the shelf is coincident. Okay. The top of the shelf is coincident with the part where this starts to create an angle. So that's really easy. We don't, there's no need to mention that at all. It's already got a height. Okay. Now the second part of this shelf is one half of an inch down from that. So that's, that should be fairly simple. Let's go ahead and make that happen. On this sketch, we're gonna create a line from that vertex there, pulling all the way to the back of the piece and clicking. So that line's already set. I'm going to create another line that is uh, 
um, one half inch from there. And it is coincident with the edges of the shape. And that's it. All that this part is, is a little shelf. So it's just a couple lines. So I can click finish sketch on that. I'm going to select this and extrude this out of the piece by one half, 0 0.5. But now I also have to bring this piece inwards because notice that this is not this part of this shelf does not end here. It actually goes in a little bit, right? So how far in do I need to extrude that is the question. So if you look here, one and one fourth, and the entire thing is one and three fourths, and from here to here is one half, which means we know that this line lines up perfectly with this line. So when I go on here to do extrude, we're going to use a new part of the extrude tool. So I'm selecting on that. I'm going to click extrude. And then instead of a number, my extent type is going to be to an object. And I'm going to extrude to that plane right there. And now I don't even have to do a number. I can just click OK. And that cut that, whatever the distance of that was. And this, just to see if that was right, this is supposed to end up being one and one fourth. So if I click the measure tool up here in the ribbon and click on that line, it is indeed 1.25, which is one and a fourth. Very good. All that's left to do now is the hole. And we've done a hole as a circle that we've extruded, but let's go ahead and use the hole tool now to sort of increase our, our knowledge of Fusion 360. So I'm going to go into, uh, I'm going to click on the hole tool on the ribbon right here. Just a cube with a hole in it as the, as the icon. I'm going to create the hole on this face. And I'm going to go ahead and do a few things. So reference, which is the first box here. I'm going to set a reference for how far it is from the bottom, which is two inches. I'm going to set a reference for how far it is from the left side here, which is seven over eight, just like that. And then the whole type, uh, is simple. Sorry. The whole type is simple. No tapping it, meaning that it's not going to be threaded. It's not, it's not going to take a screw or a bolt or anything. And the drill point is actually going to be angled. I know you can't tell on, on this draft, but the whole type does come in at an angle. If you were to see this piece in person, the only other things left to do is to set the depth of it and the radius of the, the diameter of the hole. Well, the depth, according to this, this little symbol here means depth, depth. So it's one and one eighth depth, one and one over eight. And the, we're going to leave the taper angle for the drill point at 118 degrees. I have no way of measuring that inside of that piece. I don't have any fancy tools to tell. So we're just going to leave it a default and hope for the best. And the diameter of the hole is not 1.1 inches, but it is just one. Click OK on that. And our hole is made with a really fancy drill point at the bottom. That's probably a, a fairly aggressive angle for what it, for what it is in real life, but it's close enough for me. And that is that we're going to go ahead and click the home button on there. If you're in my class, go ahead and take a screenshot of this so that you can submit it to Canvas. As always, I hope this video helped, and I will see you in the next one.